back like we never left BDA and what an amazing episode of One Piece this week. It was not any action whatsoever, but it was a lot of dialogue, information. It was an update episode, okay? First, we got King Riku and Fujitora. And, you know, last week we left off with Fujitora prostrate in front of King Riku and letting the world know about everything. King Riku put it together. He finally put it together and, and realized the reason why Fujitora did not touch Do Flamingo. He wanted the pirates to get credit. He wanted the world government to be exposed for everything that they've been doing. He did not want a another cover-up. He wants to abolish the Shichibukai system and this is one way to get that done. The more I think about it and the more I realize how Fujitora was going about things, I believe that Fujitora could have destroyed the birdcage if he wanted to. Uh, people have mentioned the meteorite, that, that's, that was a meteorite, okay? That was just him bringing down a meteorite, not even thinking about it. But Fujitora did not want credit for anything. He left it to the pirates. So more, the more and more I think about it, I do think Fujitora could have gotten out of the birdcage, but that's neither here nor there. We also had Kiros, right? And the more I see Kiros, the more I'm like, man, Kiros should have joined the crew. I would have loved seeing Kiros as a part of the Straw Hats because eventually I believe someone else is going to join the Straw Hats and they're going to become the new monster trio with Zora and Sanji and Luffy's going to be on a tier of his own. That's what I believe is going to happen. So it'd be cool to see Kiros, but Kiros was just congratulating Congratulating Tentata, let him know, like, yo, you guys are awesome. You guys are the reason why all this was possible. You guys are brave warriors, and we're now disbanded. And he, you know, gave him their props for being the, the guardian deities of Dres Rosa. And, you know, it was just an emotional moment. I really enjoyed that moment. The best part, or one of the best parts, it had so many great parts, but one of the best parts was Fujitora versus Akainu. But before we got to that, we got to see the Gorosei, right? And the more you see the Gorosei, the more you know that these guys are monsters. The guy, the blonde Gorosei, the guy with the sword, we have the, the guy with the mustache, with the scar. These guys look like monsters, and their conversation is basically around um, the, the embarrassment that Akainu suffered because he didn't know anything about Doflamingo and why Doflamingo basically announced he was resigning from Shibukai and then all of a sudden he is. not So the thing is, Akainu was trying to check the Gorosei and the Gorosei basically told him, whoa, 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 hold up small fry. You aren't as important as you think you are, okay? So you need to chill and really j just relax, all right? And Akainu didn't take kindly to that. Akainu was really going at him. In the manga, it kind of seemed like they sunned him. In the anime, it more it felt more even. It felt more like they're on the same level when clearly the girls are above Akainu. But Akainu was really going and laying into them. He was like, don't do this ever again. This is basically my appearance on the line, and I'm not going to risk that for you guys and your bullshit. Like, don't bow. Akainu does not like the Tenry Bito. He does not like authority it seems like he feels that these guys shouldn't be above them he has an issue with that so that's something to look out for we also see the words generation we saw each of them and what they're doing except for blackbeard they did show clips of them in the past but we saw x drake he mentioned the fact that doflamingo killed his dad so it was confirmed that drake was that kid that left in the crosstone flashback bonnie bonnie actually she stole a pizza so <laughs> bonnie's still up to her old tricks she cannot stop eating capone beige he's on big mom's ship so capone is officially with big mom he's working with her we saw killer kid and apu and hawkins we saw those guys and they're talking about kaido and basically those guys are like all right they got the step on us but i'm glad we're not going after the same guy we're going after Akagami right here, Shanks. And that was just cool. They're just sitting around eating. It was, it was cool seeing the worst generation again. We haven't seen them in a long time. So that was really interesting. And another hype moment. Aruj, okay? Aruj, he's on Sky Island, wrapped in bandages. And they're like, someone is here. Someone is here. And Aruj is saying, no. No one can be here. This is a deserted sky island. No one is here. And they're like, bro, someone is here. Didn't you just hear loud? He done it. And bro, bro, if you read the manga, you know exactly what that thing was in the shadows. You know, you know what that was. And I'm not sure. If, I don't, I don't think that was in the manga. I, I don't remember if they showed that clear of an outline. I don't think so. Because in the manga, I remember, you, it just completely threw you off guard. But this was more of a teaser. And listen, if you just watch the anime, 
be prepared okay be prepared it is getting awesome awesome episode of one piece this week like i said just a lot of dialogue and stuff and i enjoyed that i literally enjoyed the dialogue we even saw smoker and tashigi with the kids he saw a smoker's conversation with fujitora back then about the shijibukai system and how he wish he had uh, more status to be able to to do what fujitora was doing but then he said uh, i don't know if i'd be able to do what he's doing even if i had that status but fujitora going at a kainu okay a kainu was pissed but Fujitora was laying into him because it kind of okay look at both sides okay the world government they're trying to maintain authority and Fujitora he's like we need to be more transparent we need to be a better government we need to basically rule with an iron fist but we need to this corruption is is just too much the Shichibukai and having pirates over these islands how does that make sense so I kind of knew I get where he's coming from this is about authority this is about um, appearance this is about how we look to the people cover-ups happen all the time Fujitora now is like okay maybe if we were doing everything transparent cover-ups wouldn't have to happen if we didn't have pirates running these countries cover-ups would not have to happen so I understand both sides but come on the corruption you can't cover that up you have to let people know what's going on so you can get a fresh start so that's what Fujitora is doing and that back and forth when I kind of told Fujitora do not come back to any of the bases until you acquire the heads or the, the, the pirate straw hat Luffy and Trafalgar law and Fujitora said that's exactly what I wanted so Fujitora has a plan he has a plan and he's going to carry that out we even saw a ship said Suru and we Suda was apparently talking to somebody on her ship because we know Suda was chasing after Doflamingo and those guys for a while and you know after Do Doflamingo became a Shichibu guy she couldn't chase after them anymore so it's only fitting that she's the one to apprehend him and take him to impel down right so marvelous episode just an amazing episode 10 out of 10 I enjoyed it cannot wait for the next two episodes <sighs> Bruh. Let me know what you thought about this episode. Do you think whose side are you on? Akainu or Fujitora's? And do you know who that shadow is in the distance? Do, let me know. But again, like the video if you did, subscribe to the channel if you have not. That would be dope. But if you were going to put the person who is in the shadows, just put spoiler. So if anyone who's just an only or anime only watcher, they're not spoiled. But just um, like the video if you did, subscribe to the channel if you have not. That would be dope. Have a good day, people.